Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Elementor Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a light and dark mode toggle button like this to your website. So when the user will click this button up here, it's automatically going to change your website in between a light and dark mode. So I'm going to show you how I got this set up all using Elementor. And the good news is we're not going to be using any additional plugins to pull this off. I'm just going to be showing you how to use just JavaScript and CSS to pull this off. Now it's important to have a good understanding of CSS if you want to be able to use this feature on your website because just installing this code isn't going to make it work across your whole website. You're going to have to go uh, sometimes uh, page by page or section by section and make sure that when the user toggles this on that all the elements will switch over correctly. So I'm just going to kind of give you a broad overview on how you can add this to your website and give you some example CSS code so you can follow along. Now I'm going to jump into the back end and show you how everything is set up. So in this situation, we're going to have the toggle button sit right up here into the header. And then on this page, I'm just going to show you how I was able to toggle on and off the different settings when you flip that over. And if you are interested in purchasing this page right here, this is a Elementor style book I created a few months ago. And it's really great because what you can do is you can pull this into your website or your client website and then I have a step-by-step -step process on right here with all of the different site settings. So if you're interested in that video or purchasing this template, I'm going to leave a link in the description up here and also in the description. So now let's jump into the header template and I'm going to show you how I have this all set up. Here we are inside of my header template and let me just show you how I have everything separated out. So I just have two main containers. The very first container has the logo, the menu, and these toggle buttons. The next one I just have down here, which is the HTML or JavaScript code that we're gonna add in a few steps. But you can structure this however you want. Um, I do believe that you need this JavaScript code below these toggles. So you're just gonna wanna make sure that's always kind of below these, because I think if you put this above it, it just won't render out correctly. So now let's go ahead and show you how I have this set up. So like I said, I have one main container right here, and it's probably best to just use something like the icon widget. You can use an image widget if you want. It's kind of the same thing, but in this case, I'm just using the icon widget. So as you can see right here, I just have a simple icon of the sun right here, and then I have like a moon. So that is the different toggles. Now there are three different things you're gonna to have to add here. And right here in the main container that your two icons are sitting in, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have nothing else in here besides just your icons. And if you go underneath advanced, we're gonna to have to give this a unique ID. So underneath CSS ID, I just called this one a dark toggle. Then what I did is I added the sun icon first and same thing, I need to also go down here and give it a unique ID. So in this case, I'm giving the sun icon the ID of dark mode IMG or image. And then down here, I added another icon with the moon and this is going to be the light mode image. So if you wanna follow along with the code I'm gonna have, you're, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have these exact names. If not, you can always change these IDs, but you're gonna to have to change the code in the JavaScript in some of the CSS. So now that you have that done, what you need to also do is, like I said, now you can drop in this JavaScript code I have right here. And just like I said, you need to make sure it's below these uh, icons in order for this to work. And let me quickly go through a little bit of this code. So as you can see right here, um, what it's doing is, this one right here is the most important part right here. So it's adding an event listener. And so when the user clicks this, this code right here is going to add this special class called dark to the body. And then what it's going to do is then just use kind of CSS to turn on and off these depending on which mode you're in and what's also really cool is i'm making sure that it's adding it to your local storage and let me show you what i mean by local storage so if you want to make sure that when the user clicks to another page that the mode stays active you need to store that in the user's browser so if i switch over to this and let's say i go to something like the contact page you're going to notice that the header is still in that mode so if you didn't have what they call local storage it wouldn't store that information. So the user would have to always, every page, you know, click it back to dark mode or something like that. So let me show you real quick in the browser how you can see if local storage is working correctly or not. And I'm gonna also show you how you can check to make sure that this class right here, dark, is being added to the body of your website. 
So what I like to do is go into your inspect code in Chrome. So in this case, I'm going to hit F12. I'm on a Windows. And if you go underneath right here where uh, this tab up here called application, you're going to notice that when you click that, uh, you may well have to hit refresh on the page once you install everything. And you're going to notice this right here. If you go underneath your local storage, in this case, this is just my demo website. See this right here where it says key dark mode false. So watch what happens when I click this button right here. It goes to true. And then let me click it again. It goes to false. True. So this is registering inside the user's browser that your dark mode is on true or active. So you're going to want to make sure that this code is working correctly before you continue to you know style up and everything like that. So just go ahead inside your application in here and just kind of make sure that this button's working correctly. Now I'm going to show you how you can check to make sure that that body class is getting added to the body. So if you look right here, I have just my elements open and I have my body tag open right here. And if you keep your eye down here toward the end of it, when I start to toggle this on and off, you're going to see the word dark appear. See right there where my mouse is. Now you can see that that body has the class called dark. So that's how we're going to now use CSS to target any element on your website, because now what we can do is say anything that has the body class dark and is like, in this case, let's say an H1, you can now target that specifically. And then when you unclick this, you're going to notice it disappears. So then it's going to go back to the normal styling. So it's a pretty cool little trick in order to, you know, just use CSS to pull this type of stuff off. So now I'm going to show you the CSS code and just kind of briefly go over some of the code. And so you can add this to your website and you're going to, like I said, you're going to have to change some of these settings. What I have here isn't going to work across the board for every single page on every single website. So that's what's kind of complicated about doing like a light dark mode is you're going to have to know some CSS to really pull this off, you know, effectively. So this is the code that you can just copy from the description below and paste it in. And if you didn't change any of the different classes or IDs, uh, some of your stuff on your website is going to work. So let me just uh, go through some of this stuff and show you what's happening. So the very first one is the dark mode image. And what we need to do is use CSS to make sure that this is always hidden by default. Because when the user first comes to your website, they're not, they, they shouldn't be able to see both icons. So you're going to have to use CSS to hide that. And then that JavaScript I added earlier is going to like dynamically figure out if it's on or off. So you need to make sure that you have this in here first. And then this dark toggle, what this is going to do is give the cursor a pointer. So when the user is on the front end of the website, it's going to you know turn into a pointer. Then what I like to do is just kind of go at a high level and then work my way down. So in this case, that body class I showed you, the called dark, what I'm going to do is just globally change everything I can to just color FFFF, which is white. And then the background, which is like a light gray, this is like our branding color. So when you switch that on, what I'm doing is pretty much anything that it can grab as white, it will, and then change the background to dark. Then you're going to have to, like I said, finesse it from there and then go even deeper. So in this case, you can see right here, let me give you this example. When the user is up here and they click this on and off, I wanted to have just this top header section change to blue. So what I was able to do is say, if that dark class is attached to the body, so it needs to make sure it says body.dark, and it's targeting just this header BG, change this color to the blue. So if you look right here, this container, I have is just header BG. So that's what I'm saying. You're going to have to figure out if you don't want it to be just the black color. Because if I take that off, let me go ahead and show you what happens. If I take off header BG and I save the page, that header is not going to be blue. It's going to pull in everything that I just added right here. So let me show you. So that one I just added, this dark gray, it's going to automatically fall back to that. So that's why I recommend having this first. Because if you don't target something specifically that you want, it will always at least go back to dark. I know it's a lot of different steps, but this is kind of how you have to pull this type of functionality off. So let me go back into here, add this back to the header BG or to that section. And if I didn't mention this, the CSS code, I like to add it to where the buttons are going to be. So in this case, this is in the header. So I just threw it inside the settings for the heading. Now you can add the CSS in the customizer or in your theme file, wherever you want to add it. But I personally like to keep it 
wherever I know the icons are. So in the future, I kind of know where this code is going to be. And then if I jump down here, um, I'll talk about the logo in a second. But now what you can see is I can target all of the H1, H2, H3, H4, and make sure that they get turned to white as well. So if for some reason this fallback color doesn't work, you can you know, specifically say just these H glasses, you can change it to a different color. So that's what it is right here. So these are all just being you know, defaulted to that white color from this code. And then if you're using the global system inside Elementor, I threw some of this code in here. So if you look right here, these are my primary colors. I have primary, secondary, text, and the accent color. So this is all being pulled in right here through the site settings. So what I wanted to do is force it to you know, go to white. So this is the code you're gonna need if you need to target your global colors. Now we can jump down into the button. So you can see right here, I have a button color of this. This is like that orange color. And then you can change it to a different color on hover if you wanted. So down here, you can see it's blue by default. But then if I switch it over, it's now orange. And then when I hover over it, it doesn't change the orange, but you can change that right here if you wanted. And then you also need to take into consideration if you have contact forms on your website, you're gonna wanna make sure that you add like a white background on this right here. Cause by default, Elementor doesn't have that. So you're gonna have to add a background color of white on Elementor fields. And then just like I did up in the top section, you can target the bottom footer so that's what I called this section right here. I just made it blue. And then this right here, I wanted to show you. So if I go into this right here is the footer as well. So this up here is the footer. And so if I go into the footer template, you're gonna notice this right here, this column, I'm gonna give it a class of footer right. Because by default, it has this kind of gray color to it. So let me go back up into here. So that color in the div, if I get rid of this class right here called footer right and I hit update, you're going to notice that this section doesn't change when the user clicks into dark mode. You're going to see that it stays that color. So that's why I'm saying you're going to have to really kind of go section by section, depending on how you built the website. And you're probably going to have to go in here and start adding classes to it in order for this stuff to work correctly. So now if you hit update and you go back into it, it's going to work right here. And if you look right here, what I like to do is underneath this HTML tag, I like to call this a div. Um, usually by, it's by default, but I noticed that when you switch this to div, now you can target this you know, via code. So let me show you this code right here. So if we're saying if it's in dark mode, it's got that class footer right, and it's a div right here, change the background color to the dark color right here. And then this right here is if you have any sort of links that you know isn't being controlled by this color up here. You can always just go ahead and say anything with I, which is a lot of times the icons, you can change it to white. So now we're, let's go over the logo. So when the user clicks in between light and dark mode, you're gonna notice it goes from like this black color into a white. So that's actually probably the most complicated part about switching in between light and dark mode is being able to change logos. So what I'm doing here is I'm not changing the image you know, between a two different images or anything like that. This is using an SVG graphic. And what I'm doing is I'm using CSS to then fill that with white when you switch in between the different modes. Now, in order to pull this off, you're gonna have to make sure that your logo is an SVG. Like I said, this isn't gonna work if you're using any sort of you know, .jpg or PNG or anything like that. You're gonna wanna make sure that this is using SVG. And then what I like to do is usually SVGs you can host them as a .svg and then load it in. But in situations like this, what I like to do is add that code as your SVG right into a widget, like an HTML widget, and then change the classes right here. So let me show you what I mean by this. So if I go into this right here, you're gonna notice I have a .wiki logo, so that's the class. I wanna fill it with the gray, which is that 3333. And then when the user switches on, so when it goes into the body.dark, the wiki logo is now white. Now what you need to do is go into your SVG image and anywhere that there's a class, if you wanna change all of it to be white in this case, if I do a quick search right here for wiki logo, you're gonna see all of these areas where it's highlighted. 
I had to go in and make sure that this has wiki logos. So each one of these paths is like that part of the W is a path and that's a path and that's a path. So there's a lot of paths in this logo. So you're just going to want to make sure anywhere where it says class equals, change it to, in this case, wiki logo. So this all depends on how the SVG was made. You could clean this up and make it where it's just one big class and you don't have to worry about tagging it like this. But, you know, like I said, this is going to vary on how you create your logo. You're going to want to make sure that your class names match up to what you have in your CSS right here. So that's it for this video on how to add a light dark mode to your website. Like I said, I'm going to leave all of this code in the description below. So you can just copy and paste this into your website. And then you're going to have to go ahead and start changing out a lot of the CSS code right here. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.